Well, hello and welcome to the fourth and final part of this three-part series. I know it doesn't make any sense on how to improve your garden bird photography. Now, the reason this is part four in the first place is because I've split part three into an A and a B. So part A, which you will have already seen, uh, was about composition and what to look for in your shots. Uh, and part B, which I'm going to do now, is all about post-processing. So we're going to use Lightroom, Photoshop, and Topaz Labs Denoise AI to really focus and get those uh, bird images as sharp and as good looking as possible. Now I've been out in the garden this morning um, getting these images and actually I've had a really good morning of it to be honest because I've had a couple of birds that I haven't seen for ages pop into the garden. So first up was a female black cap and I've only ever seen her once before. Unfortunately she wasn't playing ball and I couldn't quite get the shots that I wanted there was a few bits and pieces in the way and she was a little bit far away but good to see her back in the garden but another visitor which I haven't seen since last year were the green finches so I had a couple of green finches come in managed to get some nice video also managed to get some images of those along with that I've also got some nice shots of some gold finches as well um, there was also some really like interesting behavior I saw a robin couple of robins actually and I think it's some sort of pairing up ritual where I think the male robin was feeding the female robin I saw that on the fence unfortunately didn't catch any on camera but it was uh interesting to see and there's, there's a large variety of birds in the garden at the moment I think though what I'm going to concentrate on today with the processing are some of the goldfinch and some of the greenfinch because they're the two that haven't been in for a while or I haven't got shots of for a while so we'll focus in on them and try and get some nice sharp and decent composed images. So here we are in Lightroom and the first image I'm going to focus on here is the um, goldfinch. Now this goldfinch sat on the perch for me for a long time. So if I scroll down you can see I've got an awful lot of images of it. Now the one issue that you have with goldfinches and I've got it here with this one as you'll see is it's really easy to lose the eye. And let me explain what I mean here. So I'm going to open up one of these earlier images of the bird and go into the develop module. And here you can see the, the dark feathers around the bird's eye are shielding its eye and you can't really see it. It's not very clear. So what I'm looking for and what I'm looking to do here really is to try and find a shot of this bird where these either really nice catch light in the eye or the darkness of the feathers isn't quite so obvious and the eyes a bit more prominent now we can bring that out as well using our shadow slider and a couple of other bits and pieces but what i'm looking for is something that gives me a bit of a head start in the first place so i've decided upon this image here and the reason is is that the bird's in a slightly different pose but also the eyes a bit more exposed and i should be able to do something with it to just bring it out and give it a bit more detail so the first thing I'm going to do with this image is I'm going to lift the exposure on it and I'm going to lift it quite a long way uh, because it was quite a dark image. I think I shot it at, uh, well, there you go, 1 one two hundred fiftieth of a second. Uh, and in dark conditions, it's quite difficult to actually pick up the detail on the bird. So but the good thing is with these new cameras is the dynamic range is usually fantastic. So even though it's an underexposed image, I can pull the detail back. Right, so next thing, let's just crop it. So I want to get rid of the top there of the feeder. I want to get rid of that branch that's sticking out there. I want to get rid of these, even though they're quite nice features, they're sort of a bit distracting. I want a nice clean image. Pull it across here, maybe even a bit more. Pull it down a bit, and sort of something like that. Because I really want the focus here on the bird, and the bird's the only thing in this image that's actually worth holding your attention the surroundings aren't there's nothing going on really in the surroundings that that complement the image or add to it so we're literally just going to focus here on the bird so that's the cropping done um, I just want to drop the highlights a little bit and drop the whites a little bit just so there's a bit more detail there in those feathers let's have a look at pulling up the shadows let's see what that does so you can so you can see there that pulling those up a little bit just gives the eye a bit more focus. Now it is grainy, but don't worry about that grain right now because I'm going to do something to resolve that in a bit. All we're really worrying about now is just making sure we're getting detail in the shot. 
So the contrast I'm just going to leave alone. And you know what? With bird photography, I tend to leave it that way because what tends to happen is you start pushing the contrast too much. You're really reintroducing those really dark blacks. And I just think that it doesn't really do a lot. And if you go the other way, it can make the picture look a bit flat. So I kind of leave that alone. I'm just going to add in a little bit of texture here, not a load. No clarity. I just find you start adding clarity in now and it just rips the picture apart. I mean, in the past, I was like, when I was doing any sort of photos of wildlife, I was like, oh yeah, clarity, oh look at that, really punchy. But actually, if you look, it's just starting to pull the picture apart. You don't want that. And the texture, the uh, using the texture slider, does a really very good job of just pulling in that, or pulling out that sharpness without destroying the image. A little bit of dehaze, because that will just give the background a bit of detail, a tiny bit pull up the vibrance and just drop the saturation slightly and I really like that do I just want to tweak maybe the white balance just warm it up yeah just warm it up a fraction but not too much and I'm quite happy with that there actually as an image right now it's uh it's got some nice tones to it it's really simple there's nothing I need to worry about in Photoshop here. There's no cloning or anything I need to do here. So I'm really happy with that. But now I'm going to run it through something that's just going to bring it out beautifully. And that is Topaz Denoise. So I've already got it set up here to edit in, which I think you can set up somewhere up in these uh, preferences. Can't quite remember now, but yeah. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to open it up as a copy because I want to keep the original just in case, you know, just in case, because if I, if I denoise the original, then everything I'll work with after that is going to be the denoised version. So now we've opened it up in Topaz Denoise and I just want to tell you that really and truly 99% of the time I leave everything alone. I've got the model set as Denoise AI. I've got everything on auto and I just leave it alone. I really, very rarely have to mess about with that. But what I want to show you is the difference that this makes. This piece of software is absolutely fantastic, especially for, for stuff like wildlife photography. It's just amazing. They're not paying me, by the way. <laughs> so let me just show you. So this is the split screen here. So as I start to pull it across, you can see the noise is just going there out the background. But when you actually get to the bird, the detail that it just leaves in and the crispness and the sharpness of that it's just absolutely fantastic. So look at that bird before and now look at it with a denoise applied and look at the background as well. It's just brilliant. It's really good. So like I said, I haven't done anything to it. I've just left it on auto and I'm going to apply that. And that's now going to save out and give me that shot now in Lightroom. And if you look at that now, that's just fantastic. There's a couple more slight adjustments I just want to make. I'm just going to push the texture a little bit again, just a little bit. So if you can see that before and after, so let's just drop that back down to nothing and then pull it back up. It just makes a little difference, but I really like it. Just brings that sharpness out even more in the image. And then I'm going to add a vignette and I'm going to add quite a strong vignette because why not? I want the detail. I want the eye to be drawn to the bird, so I'm going to add a reasonably strong vignette there. And then I'm just going to push the exposure up a slight bit just to counteract that, but only a little bit there. And I'll be honest with you, that's me done with that shot and I'm really happy with it. To a slightly more technical edit because that edit of the goldfinch was actually really very easy it's quite a simple image in the first place not a lot needed to be done with it so it was an easy edit but this one is slightly more challenging and this is of the green finch that came into the garden this morning so here are the green finch images and i think i'm going to pick this one here because it's um maybe not let's have a look at the next one long no i think that one's good i think we're going to pick this one here uh, it's got a nice pose and it's sort of looking up a bit and looking quite interesting. Now there are a couple of issues with this image. 
um, unfortunately. The first of which is that the body of the bird has no separation from the perch it's sitting on. Ideally, I would have liked it to be sitting on this perch here, perhaps slightly further up so this one's out the way but unfortunately it is what it is it only came into this area so this is what i've got to work with and the second one really is this half of the perch or half of the image here this perch this one going across here this branch and a couple of bits here where this is up here and this is down here so i'm going to need to work on those in photoshop really now a lot of people might say well they're there so you should leave them in and i completely you know appreciate that opinion but this isn't going into a competition this is literally just for my own pleasure <laughs> so and my pleasure says well my pleasure would be enhanced by getting rid of these so that's what i'm going to do uh, so first off i'm going to do a few basic edits i'm just going to lift the exposure i'm just going to warm it up a fraction it's going to drop the highlights down a bit and the whites maybe pull up the shadows just give it a bit of texture, a little touch of dehaze, up the vibrance, drop the saturation slightly, maybe warm it up even a bit more, something like that. Okay, should have made sure really beforehand that this is all sharp, but it is, so that's good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump on into Photoshop and just do something about these branches and a couple of bits and pieces. So we're going to edit in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are now in Photoshop and what I want to do is I want to first off just get rid of all this here. So I'm just going to select the lasso tool and I'm just going to roughly drag all this out here. I'm not worried about being too accurate because I'm going to do some clone stamp work afterwards. Just going to drag that down there and then I'm going to press Shift and F5, which will bring up the Content Aware Fill, and we're going to see how that works. Now, sometimes this works brilliantly, and sometimes it doesn't do such a great job. Either way, I'll show you what you can do if it doesn't work very well. Yeah, and there you can see that we've got an issue because it's it's selecting some of the pixels from the bird, and that doesn't look too good down there either. So let's see what we can do. So I'm going to just hit Control and Z just to bring that back. Then I'm going to go into Edit and Content Aware Fill here. And this will bring up this screen that you can then use to amend your Content Aware Fill. And what this is doing is it's telling me now that this green area is where it's picking up the pixels to predict what it wants to put in the area that I'm getting rid of. So I'm just going to get rid of the bird's beak and I'm going to get rid of its tail. And I'm also going to get rid of these bits here. And as you can see, you've got this little thing working down the bottom here that's showing me what happens when I get rid of those bits. So as you can see now, because I've removed the bird's tail and I've removed its beak and I've removed any, any part of it, but interestingly left in this little bit of tree here, what you can see, should be able to drag that over a bit, is you can see that it's using that to extend the trunk here or the branch here and also fill this in much better so it's got rid of this so if i were to add that back in you'd probably find that it would use some of the bird in this area so i'm happy with that now so i'm going to click ok and you can see the difference that's made now let's just hit Control and d to get rid of the selected area you can see the difference that's made it's it's brought out the the uh or extended this branch down to the bottom and it's done a much better job here it's not perfect but it's a lot better so if i were to do a shift and f5 content aware fill it's going to put it straight over the top of my original and then that's then gone whereas when you use the content aware fill from the menu it gives you down here a layer so if I turn this layer off, we've got the original back. If I turn it back on, there you can see it's gone. But what I want to do is I want to work on this as a whole. So I'm actually going to just select both of these and then merge layers. And then that just brings it back down to one layer. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the clone stamp. 
and then go up here somewhere. And I'm just going to clone out the obvious line. Oop, I don't want to do that, do I? Just control and Z to get rid of that. Just clone out the obvious line that you saw there. Just clone out this little bit here. And I don't really think it's particularly noticeable now that there was anything there in the first place. So what I also want to do is I want to get rid of this line here that I don't like particularly in this line up here. So I'm just going to use the clone stamp again to make it a little bit bigger here. I'm just going to select somewhere up here perhaps and just ever so slightly clone this out. just need to be careful really that I don't go too obvious with the detail in the bird there and we've just got rid of that line so you just can't see it there's a little bit there but if you're not looking for it you're not going to notice it and I'm just going to get rid of this bit here just bring up the size again of the clone stamp and just just literally I'll keep doing that <laughs> let's go over this side just literally pull that up there Get that bit again. Try across the top there. So I'm happy with that now. And you've got to remember one thing to remember as well is we're not going to use all of this area. It's going to get uh, cropped in a bit as well. There's a little bit here as well that I'm not hugely happy with, but it's not too bad. I'm going to save that out anyway. So here we are back in Lightroom. And as you can see, those changes have taken effect. I'm just going to now. Just going to bring this all in a little bit. Just going to pull that up a slight bit. Pull that across. Just getting its beak or its eye somewhere around that third. I think that looks quite nice there, like that. Okay, let's see if there are any more little tweaks we want to do. Quite happy with that actually. I don't think there's that much more I want to do to that. So. Actually, I think I'm going to run it straight through into Topaz. And again, if I put the split on, you can see the work that Topaz does there. Just smooths out that background gorgeously and just gives that detail there in the eye and the, the rest of the bird. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to apply that. Okay, and now back here we are again in Lightroom and that's just gorgeous isn't it beautifully smooth and sharp just going to pull that texture up again just a slight bit maybe just just the dehaze a little bit i'm going to give it a little bit more color just a touch more color i might just warm it up again a fraction just a fraction add a vignette Pull up the exposure. Actually, let's just just going to drop that vibrance down a touch to about there. And there's your finished green finch. you've enjoyed that little bird photography processing insight uh, hope that you've learned something maybe you have maybe you haven't maybe you picked something up along the way um, I'm gonna leave you now though anyway I'm gonna leave you with a few photos from my last few weeks out in the garden some of the birds that I've taken 
Um, and you never know, the next time that I see you, I might well be out somewhere in the countryside doing some proper landscape photography. Anyway, until then, I want to say thank you very much for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this, and I'll see you again soon.